All right, hello citizens of the Nigerverse, it's Niger once again, and this is going to be another wrestling review. Uh, so, I I get it, Hulk Hogan, probably one of the biggest stars in pro wrestling history. He, uh, he probably one of the biggest draws in pro wrestling history. WWE knew that, slash WF, and WCW knew that, that's why uh, they brought Hogan along in 1994. That I understand. But one of the downsides of Hogan being as big a star as he is, is that he was able to get away with a lot of stuff. Like, I, um, I, I just a lot of stuff that hardly anybody else would be able to get away with. If, uh, we already saw it last time with, uh, with, uh, with uh, him fighting his friend and slash enemy slash friend in real life, uh, if, uh, the butcher, or, uh, or at, uh, Bash of the Beach 90, 1994, or, but a couple of years later, he's in the main event again, but somehow this match is even wackier. I'm talking about Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man, Randy Savage, age, uh, Hitch, uh, taking on the Alliance and Hulkamania, and yes, that was their actual name, and that consisting uh, of of uh, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Ma and uh, Mang the Barbarian, Lex Luger, the Taskmaster, Z Gangsta, and the Ultimate Solution, and so and so a whole bunch of guys here. So that is one, two, three, four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and damn people in this one. On uh, thirteen, if you count the managers, that being a uh, woman, aka uh, Nancy Sullivan, aka Nancy Benoit, and today is actually the anniversary. I think it was either today or yesterday is the anniversary of what happened with her and. Uh, uh, Chris Benoit, uh, so, um, uh, obviously a little awkward there, but, but, uh, but the woman is there, uh, Miss Elizabeth is there, they actually accompany Ric Flair to the ring, and, uh, hang, uh, hang, or not quite the ring, no, 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 but we're gonna get to that, and, and, uh, Jimmy Hart, who is the manager of the Dungeon of Doom at this point, and, uh, so, Oh yeah, so ten guy eyes eyes in a match, at uh, essentially an eight on two handicap. But this could have just been any type of match. But no, this is the Doomsday Cage match. Uh, so as always, I'm not professional, not professional wrestling reviewer or anything like that. Uh, but I don't need to be to tell you that this match was not great at all. Like it's a combination of not of like bad and weird like like it is awful month so obviously this this match definitely has earned its spot in this month but this is a weird match like a very very weird match but then again this is a weird time in wcw let's just get into it if you've seen this uh, use my before you kind of know this works if you, if you haven't gonna be what i like and dislike about the match but of course because it's awful month i'm gonna be doing the inverse that being what i dislike and what i like so starting with uh, i dislike uh pretty much everything um and like like the like for starters the ridiculousness of the doomsday cage it's essentially a triple decker cage so hey so think about your standard steel cage but it's got high, uh, three levels, the upper level, the second level, and the bottom level. Not the first time they'd have a multi-cage big structure like that in WCW. Like, hey, they would have another one on at, and at um, I believe it was, I believe it was Slamboree 2000. Uh, wh whichever one where David Arquette turned heel and helped out Jeff Jarrett. But, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, but that's that's definitely something for another time and uh, another awful month. But, but uh, yeah, so, oh, oh, it's essentially a triple-decker cage and, and just the absolute ridiculous ridiculous scale of this thing so and so how it started was as, as hulk hogan and macho man ray savage kind of gauntlet style well uh who well, first at the top level was rick flair and arnold anderson and uh and uh and then at the bottom level uh, and then and the second level was 
who was, I believe, he, uh, Mang and the Barbarian. And then and towards the bottom level is Lex Luger and the Taskmaster, the Taskmaster, a.k.a. Kevin Sullivan. I forget the exact order. Not like it, ma not like it matters, because they go to, they end up all congregating at the bottom level anyway to battle Hogan and, uh, and Savage. And Z Gangsta and the Ultimate Solution are missing for the time being, and I'm sure you will find out why. Which I do have to mention, is worth mentioning, at first, Hurst, uh, Hurst, the ultimate solutions, and his name was the final solution. Sound familiar? Or it, or it should. And so, and so, because us of his relation to a certain mustached man, and uh, during World War II, who a uh, man who did some some pretty heinous things. Uh, things of course, they had to change it to uh, the ultimate solution. But, and but, uh, yeah. So. Oh, Hogan and, and Savage spend the majority of the time I'm wrestling the other six men, and, and it really it's a lot of like punches and kicks and stuff like that. At, uh, at, uh, Hogan and Savage do have an official team name, and, but I forgot what it was, and I don't feel like going back to look it up, uh, but... Uh, but uh, but uh, nevertheless, then and uh, later on in the match, Z Gangsta, uh, aka Zeus, aka uh, the uh, Tommy Tiny Lister, or aka Debo, what have you, and, and the Ultimate Solution, they make their way out. Of course, of course, uh, Zeus, of course, uh, Tiny Lister was Zeus from No Holds Barred. Heard, uh, heard, and heard, and once again finding himself fighting Hogan, and uh, and and they kind of allude to it, even though WWE all already did the whole uh whole no holds bar tie-in uh and type of match at SummerSlam 1989 but but here he is again and and, and not doing a whole lot because as both well, Z Gangsta and the Ultimate Solution are pretty limited pretty immobile in uh the ring uh hang so Oh, uh, oh, them being kept to a minimum, their involvement being kept to a mostly minimum, I guess, is the best thing for, for them, but, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it just adds on to even more of, like, like this bit, it, it adds even more to this just ridiculous ridiculous over-the-top match but if you can believe it it's about to get a whole lot stranger because as then the booty man shows up of the booty man it is uh bruce beefcake aka formerly the butcher so glad to see he and hogan patch things up um, and actually how they explain this in kayfabe is even stranger you're, you're gonna enjoy this one so apparently he he, uh, the Butcher, who would become the Zodiac as part of the Dungeon of Doom, was secretly a double agent for uh, Hul Hulkamania uh, uh, and was feeding information about the Dungeon of Doom to Hulk Hogan and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and joined up against the side of Hulkamania once again. So And so, um, again, glad they patched things up, but the Booty Man sneaks in. in which, yes, that's his actual name. Yes, that's the actual gimmick he's... Uh, going for here here uh, er, surprisingly it's the least wacky thing about this match but uh, but it's about to get even wackier because he hands Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage frying pans and yes he hands them frying pans of all the weapons you could have handed them why frying now look for uh, uh, like frying pans are kind of heavy admittedly like I've dropped a frying pan or two or ten on my foot doesn't feel great eight uh but eight but at the same time just absolutely wacky and absolutely goofy but uh, uh, again it's the least wacky thing about this match this whole match like hey, this was kind of around that time where her wcw was kind of being booked hooked, uh, hooked by like kevin sullivan and everything and as kind of like that saturday morning cartoon aspects and uh it definitely was the case but in all the wrong ways. So yeah, they wail on their opponents with uh, the frying pans. Hogan like breaks his his uh, as he's uh, uh, hitting them with the frying pans, and then ultimately uh, Randy Savage pins. I I, I don't even remember who he pinned. Uh, I might say it in the wiki here. Or, uh, 
pair. It does not. Uh, I think Savage pinned. Uh, I think. I think it was. Uh, I, I think it might have been uh, Flair. It, it was either Flair or Anderson. And mainly, everything was kind of a blur. Like, like surprisingly, for all the wacky and goofy stuff, this match was also pretty boring. How do you manage to have all this wacky stuff and still have the match be boring? And what the heck? Like, if you're gonna go the wacky, goofy route, at least have it be, like, wacky, fun, goofy. This was boring, goofy. I didn't even know boring, goofy existed until this match, but, match, but, uh, yeah, yeah, this match was pretty boring, and, uh, and it went on for 25 freaking minutes, it's, and, it's, and just, it's like, hey, uh, it, like, no amount of me talking will do this justice, and this time I mean it in a bad way. Hey, if you're curious, I, I guess, check this match out. Oh, uh, but yeah, so they, they get the pin, they they peace on out of there air after this match. This match was just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's, uh, it's, but yeah, so, oh, um... So, oh, apparently, like, oh, apparently, like, a lot of this was kind of Hogan's idea, getting all these guys in there, and apparently Kevin Sullivan went along with it, it to kind of use it, it as leverage to uh, work with Hogan, and kind of like, kind of, kind of quit pro quo in a way, like, hey, I did this for you, now maybe we can work together, which did happen to an extent, and, and it already was kind of happening a little bit, it obviously, uh, the Dungeon of Doom slash the Alliance and Hulkamania slash even the Face of Fear have been uh, feuding with Hogan for a couple of years now, but, oh, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, Hogan pretty much, this is, like, this whole scenario is how a five-year-old would describe it, it like, 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 so, oh, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, they fought Ric Flair and Arn Anderson and then Lex Luger and the Barbarian and, and Mang and, and, and Zeus, who's, and the ultimate solution, like, like, all these people in, in here, like, are, like, like, admittedly saying that is kind of doing a disservice to five-year-olds, but it, it definitely felt like that. Like, this is kind of a five-year-old old's dream in, like, the worst way possible. And I didn't even mention what happened with Lex Luger, so... Oh, they do a spot hot. It's toward the end of the match where Lex Luger puts on a loaded black glove uh, and goes to punch. I believe it was uh, Flair he was going to punch. But instead of being one smooth motion where Hogan ducks out of the way and then Lex just nails Flair, instead, uh, Lex goes to the punch, Hogan ducks, but uh, then Luger stops, ups just short, then grabs abs, uh, abs Ric Flair and then punches him anyway, hey, uh, hey, like, what, like, ugh, it's just, it's, and Millie, there are bigger problems than that, but that just adds to, it feels like everything just adds on top of this to make this match more and more just ridiculous, and more and more goofy, and more and more dumb, um, like, like, ah, uh, this match was, it was absolutely ridiculous, it's, uh, it's, uh, if I had to find some redeeming qualities about this, uh, is, uh, for starters, admittedly, he, uh, they pointed out in commentary, what a spectacle for TV, like, hey, this definitely is something interesting, I would say, hey, for TV on pay-per-view, but I imagine with all, like, the mesh and stuff surrounding the cage and the fact that it was so close to the stage, H, uh, I imagine if you were, like, out, off in the nosebleeds, which I usually am for, like, wrestling shows. In fact, that's where I'm going to be because AEW's coming to Buffalo, so I'll be there. So if you happen to see me at the event, uh, uh, stop by and say hello, and I'd love to chat with you. But, but um, but yeah, yeah, so I imagine if you're off in the nosebleeds, if you're by the stage, you can kind of see what's going on. On You see, like, like, the lights and stuff like that. But uh, I imagine if you're off way in the back in the nosebleeds, you can't see a damn thing and, uh, when it comes to this match. Had, like, hopefully they had the monitors. Or, like, if they didn't, like, I think I think they had the monitors to people for, for people to follow along with the action. But if you were off in the nosebleeds and you weren't able to watch the monitors to see what was going on, you were essentially SOL. Uh, but, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, is, is this would make it for an interesting play said at least like, like i'm surprised they never turned this into a place at hell they like i get on that mattel uh oh make the dun make the uh make the the uh <clears throat> make the doomsday cage place at hell you did it for the punjabi prison i know that was technically jacks but i know that's you did it for the punjabi prison you might as well do it for the doomsday cage but yeah just a ridiculous match match in all the wrong way haze and and how, how on earth was Hogan able to get away with this? 
I mean, I know how, but uh, just how on earth was Hogan able to get it away with all this ridiculousness? It's, but if you can believe it, when it comes off a month, we ain't quite done with Hogan yet. But as for this match, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and turn on post notifications you know, so you know every time I upload a video, you see as it drops. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the match and my review of the match. Do you like, like the match? Do you like, like my review of the match? Let me know. And I'm sure there's even still some stuff off that I forgot to mention uh, when it comes to this match. Uh, uh, it's, it's tr it truly has to be seen to be believed. You know what? I, I do recommend this match at just out of like, sheer morbid curiosity. It's kind of funny from like a shot in Freud. Look how ridiculous this, uh, this match I think is, but uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, this match was not it. it but Hulkamania, baby! Uh, but nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.